Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So with this video, we are going to start a new uh, series on Java interview question. It will be a mini series, simple questions, simple tricky questions will be uh, will be taken in this particular series. And a couple of people were asking about, they were sending the emails also with different questions and it is difficult to reply to them. So I thought of creating this series. So without wasting our time, so the question is that you have to convert the array element to a joiner. For example, let's see if this is an array variable and having three values, TRV or any number of values. So the output should be like this, either TRV or it can be T colon R colon V or it can be T pipe, let's see R pipe and then V like that. It means you have to combine and you have to uh, join everything together in a particular string. So output should be TRV or T colon R colon V. So how to do that? It could be a string array also, it could be a, an integer array also here. So there are various ways of doing it. You can just directly inbuilt method also. You can use that. You can use a string builder also, or with the help of a string, uh, uh, with the help of uh, Java streams also, we can do that. So let's see. So there is one direct method is available. A string dot simple, very straightforward. Join method is there. And this join method is saying that uh, what exactly the separator on what basis you want to join this. I mean, I want what basis you want to concatenate it. So let's see, for example, colon basis. And this is my array name. That's it. And this guy will give you, uh, the join method will give you a new brand string and you just store inside the string. Let's see string join is equal to this and uh, print this uh, join on the console. So let's see what is the output that you are getting it. So here you can see T colon R colon B, we are getting it. And now it's up to you. If you don't want to provide any separator, you just remove it and then run it again. So in that way, output will be TRV. Simple, if you really want to use a pipe over here, that also you can use it. So see the output is coming T pipe R pipe V like this. Okay. So for example, let's see, I'm using this one. So this is the first way of doing it. Second way is that you can directly use the streams with the streams. Also, it's very simple. What do you have to do? Arrays, you have to use that and arrays dot as list. So first you have to convert that string array to an array list. So for example, let's see, you can directly use ARR over here, whatever the uh, list that you are providing. Or you can just have your own uh, list element also. If you really want to pass, let's see, let's add some more values. Let's say I'm passing T colon, then I'm writing Y colon, then I'm saying, that, okay, fine, N colon, or let's say I'm passing um, I over here. And then again, put a comma, and then uh, let's see, N, and then again, put a comma, and then semicolon, and then G over here. So let's see, I, I have this, uh, and then let me add R over here as well. So this is the trying and then it's written and coming in the form of, uh, let's see, array or array uh, as list also, you can directly use it here. I want to do, first of all, convert that into a stream, okay? So let's see, I'm writing in a new line so that you will see the separate single uh, statement. So dot stream that I'm going to use and then you write dot uh, collect method and then how exactly you want to collect. So simple write collectors. Uh, you have to write that is collectors exactly. And uh, with collectors dot, there is one method that is called joining method and then joining method with the help of what? Joining method with the help of semicolon. Okay. And then this guy will give you, it will collect everything together, join with the semicolon. And then again, it will give you another string here. So for example, let's say a string join uh, one is equal to this. And then I'm going to print join one here. So let's see what is joined one. So joined one is coming as a trying here. If you don't want to use this guy, remove this, no separator, nothing. And then the exact value is coming as trying. If you want to use any other thing, let's say pipe, then you can use pipe also. It means all the array elements will be concatenated together with the help of whatever the separator or joiner that you are passing it. On the basis of that, it can be done. So this is the second approach and this is the simple first approach that we have seen. Now, uh, you can use a string builder also. So how to use that? So it's again simple without using any, uh, let's see, join, string.join or without using any streams. If I really want to use that with the help of, uh, let's see, a typical append or concatenation with the help of a string builder, because we know that a string builder is mutable, not immutable. So I don't want to use a string directly. I want to use a string builder here. So let's see how to do this, okay? So I'll do one thing I'm going to create, let's see one generic method, and then we will start calling this method. This will return the 
combined string and then I'm saying let's see this is my join string method that I have created this join string method says that uh, you have to give me first of all a separator <clears throat> uh, I mean like on what basis you really want to separate and then you have to give me the array values so I'm passing three dot parameters and let's see uh, values over here like this so this will be um, this will be my what this will be my array variable okay now I have to return something so we will let's see we will return something as an integer I mean sorry as a string so initially let's see it's void in nature and this is a method that I have created now I'm going to use one string uh, builder class and uh, let's see this is string builder sb is equal to a new string builder this string builder is the existing class which is already available in java and a string builder is actually uh, a mutable class not immutable so we can modify we can append the values in the same object so let's see i'm going to maintain one end variable over here initially zero and i'll tell you why and then i'm going to write a for loop because whatever the array that you are passing so we have to iterate this loop okay so this is a string three dot parameter mean this is an array you can see string array you can directly pass the string array also or a string three dot also you can pass it both are same thing so what kind of values do we have let's say i'm writing a for each loop let's see we have a string um, s colon values and uh, <clears throat> i'm putting one condition if s is not equal to a uh, null first of all then only you have to keep appending whatever the s that you are getting right so the first value of s will be whatever that you are passing for example let's say i'm going to call this method over here okay this is my join string and it's what is the separator the separator is let's say colon and uh, arr is the array so if you can if you don't want to pass array directly what you can say that okay fine i'm going to pass uh, something like this my array variables let's see a then comma then b then comma then c over here like this also you can pass it or you can store inside the array and then that also you can pass it over here like that okay so let's see a b c that i want to combine them together on the basis of the separator that i'm passing that is semicolon then um what i'm going to do that i'm going to use a string builder sb dot append method i'm going to use append with what append with s over here okay so first you append with s it means in this particular string builder i'll keep appending the first value the first value is what first value is a a will be appended and then after that i'm going to update this particular end variable with the sb dot length whatever the length of this particular sb the string builder let's see in the first time it will be one then again i'm going to write sb dot append because see we have to get the output like this a then colon then b then colon then c so what we have to do again then we have to append with semicolon because after first value that we have added over here let's see for example first value a and then we have to append with the semicolon here right so i'm appending with the semicolon so it will become a colon okay so i'll just keep doing in this particular loop again s go to the second value second value is b and then it will say okay fine uh, sb dot append sb is already up updated with a colon then b will be appended over here then again the semicolon will be up updated then it will be a colon b colon and then finally c will be appended over here once again but then it will become a colon b colon c colon okay after this particular for loop see the mistake that most of the people do what exactly they do and they say okay fine i'm going to return this particular sb finally from this particular string so let's see for example let's see i'm saying that I'm going to return a string from here okay let's see this is the string okay so what you can do that let's see I'm simple saying sb dot a two string that I'm returning and then I'm going to call this particular method system dot out and then I'm just printing the join string directly so let's see what is the output that we are getting here the output that we are getting a colon b colon c after c also we are getting colon because we have appended this particular colon right so we have to remove this colon because after appending it will be colon here like that so instead of writing sb directly i'll say okay fine no i simply say a substring method also i can use it and then the second substring method from where you want to start i want to start from zero and then up to the what the complete end that you have used it means this end is already updated with the sb dot length so whatever the final sb dot length that you have captured in the end 
and then I'm going to use it. So this is the property of the substring. Let's see if I'm passing 0 to 9 here. So it will capture from 0 to 8 actually. It will just ignore the last index value. It means this end index value will be ignored. It will be end minus 1. Okay, with substring. Now let's see right output are we getting or not. So now run as in Java application and then you can see that A colon B colon C we are getting it. Now it's up to you which separator you want to pass. So for example, let's see instead of this hard code value, I'll just pass the separator here. Okay, this is just to explain you. Now I'm just going to use separator and then what is the separator? I don't want to do anything like no separator, just simple combine them together. And now the output will be ABC here. Now I'll say, okay, fine. You just combine with double pipe. Then each and every value will be separated by double pipe A, double pipe B, double pipe C like that. Right. So like this also you can do that. So it's up to you how exactly you want to separate. Perfect. So this is a join string. You can do that. Same thing if you really want to use with the integer. Exactly same thing you can use with the integer also. So I'm going to write, let's see, join integer. Okay, let's see join int method that I have written. In join int method, obviously that uh, string separator will be there. But now this time I'm passing the integer values or integer array values that I'm going to pass. Everything will remain same. The only thing is that we have to maintain this integer here because now it will be the integer array and uh, this is fine and everything looks good. And then let's pass some integers over here. Right. So I'll do one thing again. I'm going to call this particular method. And this time I'm saying, OK, fine. You make separator with the help of colon. And this time I'm passing integer values. I'm passing one comma two. Sorry. Yeah, let's see one comma two comma three comma four comma five. And all these values uh, should be combined them together. So this is the uh, separator. And then I'm going to use join int method. I'm going to call it here. Perfect. Will this work? So output should be what? Output should be like this. 1 colon 2 colon 3 colon 4 colon 5. So we have to combine them together. So now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and combined by semicolon. Let's see if I'm combining with the uh, combining with nothing. So then everything will be together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this also you can use this. So you must have seen these kind of questions at the time of interview. Very simple, very basic one. They really want to see multiple approaches. You can use it like this with join int and join a string, create a simple method, generic method, use the string buffer with the string buffer. It will be super easy and very powerful, very fast. You can use that without using any existing like join method or streams. Now, one more thing that if you really want to use the strings, sorry, uh, streams for the integer arrays, can we use that? Yes, of course we can do that. So exactly same thing. Let's see, I'm going to use over here for the integer uh, data. So first of all, that we have to create one integer um, arrays dot as stream. So I'm writing, okay, one comma three comma, let's see, nine, nine, 99, then 90, then comma four comma five like this. And then let's see, this will be the join number two. So first of all, that see, I cannot, it's giving you error that, hey, are you going to convert this a numeric or uh, integer array list that you have created, converting a stream and then this collectors dot collect will not be applied on this integer type of argument. Um, this is not applicable for that. So what we have to do first, first we have to map with the uh, string. It means each and every value that you are passing in the form of numeric values, we have to convert that into a respective string value. So what exactly I'm going to use, I'm going to use a map function here, and then I'm going to create one E and supply with the Lambda. And then I'm going to convert each and every E. E means representing this element of elements of this particular stream. It, and this stream, all these values are available, right? So it will go to each and every element of this stream in the form of E. And then same E I'll be supplying to this method that is called a string dot, let's see, value of method and then pass E. It means this one will be converted to a string, two will be converted to a string. And then after that, I can apply the collection dot collect whatever that we are using it here so i'm going to use let's see uh, after stream dot a uh, collect collectors dot uh, which method the collectors dot joining method we have to use it and uh, joining on the basis of what joining on the basis of let's see semicolon that's it it will store inside the join to i'm printing the join to 
so let's see all these guys should be printed and uh, separated with semicolon so here you can see that uh, 1 2 3 99 94 5 coming here like that perfect now let's see i just don't want to uh, uh you know append with anything no joiner so in that case here you can see that only the exact values are getting concatenated with each other properly and then you are doing it like that also so like this also you can simple do that so ultimate question is that uh, you have an array or arrays of uh, numeric values or string values how will you combine them uh, together like this okay there are other ways also you can just simple iterate this particular array and then keep appending with the uh, you know a specific separator and then keep doing it with the help of for loop that also you can easily uh, do it over here okay so these are the various ways of doing it guys just practice very simple very straightforward question and uh, i hope it's clear if you have any other approaches to solve this problem i'm pretty much sure there will be other approaches also feel free to write in the comment section that's all for today i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you